Hey everyone, how's it going? Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we went through our code and added some comments. I believe the episode was called Commentary, because I'm pretty clever like that. Things such as this, where we can just kind of look back at our code and realize or remember what everything does. Uh, game, I guess, didn't need that much. These are probably bad examples. Oh gosh. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so we just commented and then we can look back and uh, hopefully have a more clear view on what all these methods and variables actually do. So this week, or this episode, I suppose, what we're going to do is we're going to implement a way for our player to actually choose towers. Um, I think in this video, we might just choose one tower. So, you know, if it's one choice, I don't know, the illusion of choice. But anyways, what I mean by that is right now when we hit the game, when we uh, execute it here and we hit play, a tower already pops up. Obviously, we don't want to do that uh, unless you just happen to want to place a tower right there. And it's always, it's not in the center necessarily. It's right where you hit the play button. So if we hit it up here at the top right, it spawns up here. Top or bottom left is down over there. Uh, so we're going to fix that kind of incidentally. So that's going to kind of be an accidental fix based on what we're going to implement, which is a button. And eventually this will move to some kind of cascading menu, I imagine, that pops out from underneath or the left or top or right but for now what we're going to do is we're just going to have a button on the screen maybe in the top left corner and when we click that we'll be able to see where we're going to place our tower and then we could click it to place it and we don't accidentally click you know a tower on the map but we just want to hit play and we can actually see at a time where we're going to place it uh kind of hard to explain i guess um actually maybe not that hard to explain maybe i'm just doing a bad job explaining it but follow along and by the end we should be able to click a button have a tower that shows where it would be placed and then click to place it on the map. That is basically what we're gonna do this video. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take. Usually I kind of go ahead of the videos and do like a demo, um, but I think we're gonna play it a little fast and loose this time. And that's because we're gonna be changing a lot of classes. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, first, we're gonna start in our game class. Now, if you'll recall, we have this fancy little UI package here. We have a UI class here which I'm pretty proud of. I think we did a good job with this. Um, very simple class uh, for a relatively complex task of creating a UI. All it does is it has a array list of buttons. It can uh, draw all those buttons and it could check if the buttons are clicked. And then we could use that uh, return of the if statement, in this case a Boolean, to do an action in whatever class calls the button. So, so far we've been using it in our main menu class, if you recall. Uh, that's what we see when we first start the game. These are buttons, obviously. One goes to the editor, one quits the game, and one plays the game. Now we can use the same class uh, in our game class. So we're going to make a UI here. So private UI. And we might have multiple UIs. Uh, in the future, we might make a sub-menu of UIs called menu or selection screen. Uh, but for now, we're going to name this private UI. And you know something descriptive. Mine's going to be tower picker UI. And we need to import this. Uh, yep, there we go. And let's see, in our constructor, we're gonna initiate this. UI equals new, oops, it's a tower picker UI equals new UI. Takes no arguments, I believe, yep. And now, right below this, actually we should make a separate method because I don't wanna do all this UI stuff inside of our game constructor. Let's. Uh, Let's go ahead and put it below, hmm. Put it above the update method, uh, private void setup UI, no arguments. And here's where we can uh, kind of set up everything. Uh, we'll call the method from right here and we'll put this line here to start it. And now obviously we need some buttons, right? Or at least one button. So that would be tower picker UI dot add button. We did name for the button. So I'll call this one, uh, Canon ice, and we need the name of the texture. So we're not gonna quick load it like up here. We just need the string and our UI will load it for us. So I believe uh, that'd be Canon gun blue. Yeah, we'll just do the gun for now. You, we might wanna make a, a full texture of the base and the gun so it looks better, but for now let's do the gun or the base, whatever you wanna do. Uh, X and Y, let's put it zero, zero on the top left corner. All right, so first off, let's see if this worked. Uh, we're gonna need to draw this. So below player to update, we can call tower picker UI dot draw. 
Now if this worked, we should see a blue cannon gun in the top left corner of the screen. And it's there. Looks good, huh? Looks like it's almost overlapping our tile, but it's not. It's because of that cool border. Gosh, this grass texture is really good looking. You guys were right, you know, before I was kind of modest about it, but it's a pretty good looking texture. Anyway, our button's there in the top left. It doesn't do anything. Uh, it's just kind of sitting there. So what we're going to do next is... Hmm, thinking, thinking. Let's go to our player class. And we're going to need to rearrange how we're doing towers right now. Right now we're doing really no check. We're checking if we have enough cash uh, when we place it, which is our handle mouse input. We're saying if we click the left mouse button, then if we have 20 cash, take away 20 cash and put a tower down. And that is all we're doing. You can see here in the console, that was me placing towers the last game, I believe. Uh, I believe that's what we're tracking, right? Let's see. Yeah. So I start with a lot of cash, you place them, and we get zero, and you can't place any more. So that works, at least. Uh, some constraints that don't work that we'll need to implement are placing multiple towers in the same tile. Doesn't really make sense. Looks like a machine gun now. Uh, but we'll do, that. we'll do that in the future. So we're going to need to make some new variables in the player class. Uh, let's see. One would be... Maybe it's public or private? Pro probably private tower um, temp tower. That works. Uh, we'll also need another boolean for holding tower and probably some other stuff, but for now let's work with that. Here we'll set this dot holding tower equals false because when we start the game we're not going to be holding a tower already and this dot temp tower equals null, not set to anything. And let's see. There's like a few different things we need to change. So I'm just trying to figure out what the easiest um, order of operations is to implement this. Uh, in our update, we want to start drawing it first off. So let's uh, make a new comment so we know what we're doing. And we'll say update uh, holding tower. If we're holding a tower, then tower, is it temp tower or tower temp? Tower temp, it's temp tower, okay. Temp tower dot set x. And you know, before we do this, we're gonna make a little cheating method here, because so far to get the grid, we've been doing this thing over and over, grid that get tile, mass that x, tile size, height, minus y, blah, 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 blah. And we've used it multiple times here. You can see here and, and here, and we're gonna use it some more times. So why not just make it a method? You know, that's the beauty of methods. So let's go ahead and go down here. Make a private, it's going to return a tile, uh, get mouse tile. And we can actually just copy and paste this grid.get tile call right here. There we go. Put it down here. Uh, parenthesis, semicolon. Oh, return. All right, easy enough. Now we can just call uh, temp tower.setx at get mouse tile dot uh oh what did you wrong get mouse tile prep folding tower tower dot sex get mount what did I do wrong here it's probably very obvious when you're watching the video but I promise it's not very obvious to me right now so temp tower dot set x get oh obviously you know guys honestly i've been programmed in a, in a few weeks or a month or so so sorry about that parentheses you're calling a method obviously in parentheses there get mouse tile parentheses get x and we're gonna do the same thing for the y so temp tower dot set y get mouse tile dot get y and lastly we're gonna draw it temp tower dot draw Okay, now we need to set our holding tower. So let's go back to the game over here and set up UI. We're gonna make a separate method to update the UI. Update UI. And inside of here, we can uh, tower picker UI.draw. Can get rid of that and instead replace it with just a call to update UI. And we can draw it there. Uh, now let's make the if. Uh, conditions for our buttons. That'd be if 
tower picker UI dot is button clicked. It is called Canon Ice, as you can see right above here. Then player dot, we need to set the tower somehow. So let's go to our player class. I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys. So what we're doing now in the game class is we're making a method that can update our UI that we just made called our tower picker UI. Uh, that's when we made the button in the top left of the screen. And now we're making an if statement to check what to do when we click that button at the top left, that little cannon at the top left. So if it's clicked, the cannon ice button was what we made, we need to uh, make the player pick up a cannon ice tower. So that's what we're doing right now. That method doesn't exist yet. As you can see here, I have this dot and I can just realize to make way through. So now we're going to the player class to make that method. Uh, it will need to be public because we're accessing it from another class, the game class. So let's go ahead and do that right here, right above, right below, right above, right below, right, right above, get mouse tile. Public void uh, set temp, how about just uh, pick tower and it will take a tower T, oops. And we will set temp tower equal to T. Okay, and also in addition to that, uh, holding tower equals true, right? Because now we have a tower picked. So now in our game class, we can use that new method, player dot pick tower. Uh, we know it's the cannon ice button, so we can actually just make a new cannon ice, oh no, wait, tower, tower, cannon. Let's make it blue instead of ice. I, I take all this back. I'm conflating the two. Cannon blue. Cannon blue, tower cannon blue. And for that, we need a tower type, which would obviously be tower type dot cannon blue. We need a tile, um, tower picker UI. This honestly, the tile can be anything. So grid dot get tiled zero zero, because remember, we're constantly updating it in the player class to our mouse position with that get mouse tile. And we need the enemy list. Luckily, we're in the game class, so we have the uh, wave manager right here. So that'll be wave man. Sheesh. We, we wave manager. It's like my brain is when I'm typing into the right side of the screen. It keeps going further. Wave manager dot get current wave dot get enemy list, and that should work. Long line, but it works. So. This seems too easy to be true. So let's let's see if uh, this worked here. Of course, we're still uh, putting towers down here. Okay, so it did work in a way. Uh, if you noticed what happened, I didn't actually click the button in the top left, but when you go over it, it, it registers as a click because we're not actually waiting to see if the mouse button's down. We're just seeing if the mouse is over the button. So if you move your mouse over the button here, you get this little tower. And you can see where you're going to place it. So if we want to place it over here, again, also notice that it's not active, so it's not shooting the enemies. It's just kind of a demonstration of where it's going to be. Uh, eventually what we might do is lower the opacity. Um, so you can kind of see a little transparent, so it's more obvious that it's not actually in the game. But for now you can see ahead of time where you're going to place it, and say you click and you put it there. And now it's active. Uh, so next step would be to make it so that we need to click the button before we actually get it by scrolling over it. So in our update UI, we're going to say if mouse.next, which just means that if there's any kind of new data coming from the mouse, whether it be a click or a change in position, uh, etc. Basically, it stops us from running a bunch of for loops or, or if statements when the mouse isn't even doing anything, trying to save us some computing power there. Uh, we can tab these two over there for formatting. If mouse.next, you can say if uh, mouse, how about this? How about boolean mouse clicked equals mouse dot, is it get button down? Mouse dot is button, there we go. Mouse dot is button down zero. So we made a temporary boolean here called mouse clicked and we're setting the equal to mouse button down zero, meaning if you're clicking the left mouse button down, then this will be true if you're not it'll be false. So below that we can say if mouse clicked. I know this seems kind of 
weird. It's like, why not just say if mouse dot is buttoned down, but we're gonna be doing multiple checks here in our game update UI. So the mouse clicked Boolean might come in handy later and it's just shorter to write than is buttoned down. So we're gonna need another closing bracket here. And again, we could tab all that forward. Okay, so now it should only activate the button when we click it. Let's try that out. All right, it's not going when we do it over it. Now let's click, and we got it. We also placed a tower under it, incidentally. So the next step would be to not actually place towers unless we're holding a tower. That's the original bug, I guess you could call it. Uh, when we click play, it puts a tower on the screen. We don't want that. When we click the button, it puts a tower over there. We don't want that either. So let's make it so that only when we're holding a tower, we can actually place one. That'd be in the player class. And we're gonna make a new method called place tower. This could be private because the, uh, the player's gonna handle it on his own. Private void place tower. And here we have the handle mouse input. Uh, if you left click, Let's go ahead and copy this this whole line here and delete it. And we're just going to go to our place tower method. And now in our place tower method, we can go ahead and paste that. Uh, we can also shorten it a lot by getting rid of this long grid dot get tile and replacing it with get mouse tile. A little bit easier to read there. Tower list add. So we're saying when we place the tower, we're going to check if we have 20 cash. If we do, we're going to subtract 20 cash and we're going to add this. What we should also check is if we're holding a tower. And uh, go ahead and tab that over there. So if we're holding a tower, then we can place it and charge us for it. So we click play. Hopefully the tower won't be there. It's not. That's good. We click around. No tower is spawning there. We go to the button. We click it. And we got a tower to place. Now, it's not gonna disappear once we place it because we're not getting rid of the holding tower yet. But let's go ahead and place it. And we placed a tower. So that should be an easy fix. In our place tower, we can just go ahead and after we place it here, uh, set holding tower equal to false and set our temp tower equal to null once again. Let's go in the game. Play, boop, boop, there we go. A little bit more uh, legitimate, I guess. I was gonna say professional, I don't know if I'd, if I'd go that far, but at least it's actually working now. Uh, when we start the game, we hit play. Actually, someone noticed this in a comment or mentioned it. Uh, when we hit play, the tower is no longer there. That's good, we have to go up to our little button there. Uh, like I said at the beginning, you might wanna make a custom texture for this, which would just be the bottom and the top, you know, in fact, on Patreon, um, I'll go ahead and do that for you guys, just in case you guys don't know Photoshop or something. I'll, uh, in the uh, in the Patreon description, I'll put a, a link to the texture that has both the base and the gun. So you can use that for the button up here. Uh, and if you're not on the Patreon, it's right here. Patreon.com slash Indie Programmer. Big thanks to everyone that's been supporting me on there. And I think that that is it for this episode. Uh, we made the temp tower. Uh, it might... It doesn't really have a use so far. I might as well just call it Cannon Blue, right? Because it's all we're doing. But it should be very easy in the next episode or next episode or two to allow different buttons. So based on what we did this episode, it's actually very simple for us to add another button for the Ice Tower. You know, and make us choose the Ice Tower instead of the Tower Cannon Blue. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. And I will see you all next time on Indie Programmer. <laughs>